Well, I'll say shut, I'll say. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have, um, we have one more talk this morning uh, by John Wayne. And uh, John Wayne kindly agreed uh, uh, to review for us heavy carbonium production in quantum chromodynamics in general, also in the, the inclusive case where there are many uh, open questions. And relate that to um, exclusive processes where we uh, um, 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 improve the DPDs. Okay, Thanks. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me. And also, my assignment, the title was given to me is High Chromium Production PCD, which is very broad. And uh, so, I will try to, as uh, uh, Christian said, to summarize the issues we have been dealing with since the discovery of GSI more than 30 years ago. But also have some connection to uh, exclusive process. At the end of the day, uh, since uh, well, the organizer usually mentioned yesterday, he did some work related to JSI and also it's exclusive uh, at the D term or mass term. So I think so he's organizer. We're all probably, giving presidential so since he's the organizer, he might not be able to give a talk on it. So I will mention at the end, um, uh, sort of connected to what I'm going to say in my talk. But if there is a question, I will try to answer, or he can answer better. Okay, so that's a plan. So we know the JSI discovered that it's a November Revolution, <coughs> more than 40 uh, years ago. But uh, that, what really changed is I think uh, since then, we discovered many more particles, heavy flavor particles. So that standard model, in some sense, is more, more com complete because the stuff on here, we have heavy flux sectors. And the hydrogen side is also not only the mass on barrier, now we start to see a lot of XYZ particles involved in heavy flavors. So what I want to talk in this uh, outline is uh, I want to emphasize the dual roles of heavy coconium physics. It's really involving two parts. One is the QC heavy coconium themselves in the QCD found state. But it's a special bond state, not like the uh, pi or proton. In that case, all the quarks are very, very light, almost massless. They're all moving very distant. On the other hand, the heavy quark, the, especially the B meson or the upsilon, the heavy quark is pretty heavy. It's a sort of a, it's not quite like the um, molecule or atom. I think the nuclear is so heavy compared to the mass of the uh, atom. But you have you know, relatively localized charge, so in the sense the structure could be a bit simpler than the structure of a nucleon or that uh, line members. So that in that sense, a study of heavy quark itself, it has you know it's very, very important to understand the bound state in PCD, but also because of the heavy mass, because of the um, mm -hmm. uh, heavy flavors, we actually can use that as localized probes. So we can see the structure of a light particle, use heavy. So that's a dual role I want to emphasize. Then, but in order to use it for this particular workshop, I'm not going to talk much about bound state or the spectroscopy, but rather the concentrate on, say, the second part. So then immediately to answer the second part of the production mechanism, how successful a theory of the MRTC effect condition, that's what I'll mention, because that the uh, former that had been most successful. Then it's connected to this workshop, BIC, which involve the production of coconia through inclusive, <coughs> semi-inclusive, as well as exclusive. I will explain some difference. And also from that measurement, you can extract PDF of like a gluon distribution of the imaging and the spectral near threshold, which can 
provide some information related to uh, hydrogen mass. And finally, I gave a summary. I want to emphasize we don't understand heavy corponium, probably could not claim we understand this indeed, even though heavy corponium is. Well, unfortunately, the reverse is not true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So now that we know the uh, spectroscopy, this is just one slide to show the uh, heavy component is a QCD bound state. We see a lot of well known state, J psi, psi prime, all these things. But now we start to see a lot of new particles. And then uh, you can start to put it on this X and Y Z particle. Same with Oops, well, it's a really big industry now. A lot of uh, my colleagues in both the lattice size as well as the uh, continuous side do the like, partial wave analysis approaches. So a lot of efforts. But for us, is really want to emphasize second part, localized probe. They can probe the structure as well as since uh, we're not talking much about this workshop, but also use that to probe the media property. You know, uh, they often say that Coconia is like a thermometer, tells you because the te when temperature is comparable with the bonding energies and you can see the dissolution of these uh, Coconias. So, and also, so that in, in some sense, if you have a photo production or DIS production with the heavy flavor, by required log exchange or uh, momentum provide from, uh, even you do the diffractive process, you have to have sufficient large amount of momentum to produce the heavy flavors. So in that case, you have a localized probe to help you to probe the structure of the hydrons. So this is the part uh, connected to the workshop. But the question of why QCD is so hard to deal with, there's many reasons. Here I just will use one slide to talk some of a couple of them, which are connected to the hydrogen. First of all, it's a strong couple, non-linear, non-perturbative, that's a hot, and a realistic. It's a really non-trivial QCD vacuum, and also now localized the heavy mass charge center compared to atom. You know, atom is simple, you have nucleus to take the 99% of mass, localized there, the electron moving around, have a huge phase space. You can, so you can quantum mechanics work pretty well, but you know, if you do the, uh, think about proton, all the light will quantum fluctuate, a lot of or pair of gluon, they all move right this. They never have a spear picture, like people draw in the atom. You have nucleus and electron moving around. What you we have is quantum probability. You find the probability to find the quarks, probability to find the gluon, probability to find the correlations. Those are encoding to the particle distribution, TMD, TPDs, and multi particle correlations. So that's very different from the uh, atom of uh, QED. And on the other hand, if you're dealing with a heavy flavor, I will mention, because the mass of a heavy fork might help us to bridge the gap between these two. And also, the gluons dark carry colors. So this is a really interacting charge. We never see the free fork gluon isolation. So how can we probe the gluon dynamics and quantify the structure and emergence hydron if we don't even see them? So, so heavy coconut, as I said, bridges in between. Because the heavy fork as relatively localized heavy mass charge centers. So if you think about people studying spectroscopy, they can use a introduce potential model. And if you really want to study structure of nuclear, I'll never really do the potential model, because right, it's completely realistic. Then, uh, so heavy coke uh, in pairs of rest frames almost not realistic. That, you know, that's also give the reason that an QCD has been the effective theory used for studying the heavy coke physics, and also production of heavy coke Hair could be perturbed because they are sufficiently high. So those are the good things. And also top folk, of course, decay too quickly. It's, uh, it's almost impossible for many bounce state. So what we really deal with, the Chamonix and the then that's a typical mass. So that's a slice. So now what I have for point, what's the typical scale, how we deal with it? As I mentioned, the velocity, the effective velocity is pretty small, like a special polyponium then the heavy coke moving relatively slowly inside the bound state. And also if we try to produce them, we really have well separate momentum scale. So we, it's a, that's a sign to introduce no, it. Is, is it V squared or V? I thought V, v is squared. about point three for, for Charmonium. Well, the, the, the V are defined a mass square mm -hmm. over the, um, um, the, you can imagine the, take the example, open charm. V is the velocity. Yeah. yeah the velocity. Uh, it's a rough right estimate. Well, we can go through the detail. I remember V is about V is 0.3 in the JPEG, so not V squared. No, because that, I mean, if you if you unsquare that, that would mean that it's small. It's a big. V, v, v is a big. V is big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's big, but it's not that. It's not well, that we can big discuss the afterwards what the mass you want to do in front of the head. Not V squared. 
then uh, you, uh, we can discuss it. Okay. That's an estimate. If you can look over it and like this paper will tell you. Yeah. Then uh, also, but what I'm interested for me is really, or if you try to produce it, use it for a <laughs> probe as the second role of the, this polonium. There are multiple scale involved, and but those scale were separate. So that means it's a really give you the chance to introduce effective theory. We have a PT, if you produce it, then also mass and core, those are perturbative scale. Then also you can have, say, non-perturbative scale like uh, momentum, especially the charm is certainly non-perturbative. Then the bottom is bottom line, it's also non-perturbative. Then, uh, then also there is energies. Then the, the, so the effective theory corresponding to that, the top one, of course, it's a perturbative <coughs> QCD, and the soft, in this case, unlike QCD, when you go to extremely bonding energy region, that introduces an ultra soft. Uh, uh, then, so, but when you measure the cross section, you never see this private directory. What you see in the real experiment, you see the root S, PT, and a mass of a hydrox. You never see these kind of quantities. So, the, but because the mass of hydro is sufficiently heavy, internal prime like mass of sufficiently heavy, the paternity is expected to work to produce the production of heavy pulp chaos. The difficulty is really the emergence heavy polonia from a produced heavy polonia. That part is non perturbative but depending on where they plot, related to the uh, exclusive process, inclusive process, semi inclusive process, we all have to worry about hydronization process may interfere with the production process. Because initial state hydron, you can have a spectator, a spectator may extract uh, with a hydronization process by exchange of gluon, then you can break the whole factor. So those are the issues we have to deal with. Then also, there are a few uh, examples people already know. It's a puzzle. We still don't understand it after all these years. <coughs> but we all know that it's a very clean process, e plus minus to j psi plus charm. So you look for j psi, but the event is still have another d somewhere. So that's a well-defined measurement. You measure that, so people can calculate in RQCD. But of course, the experiment data is almost at temperature. And also, you can say, okay, I compare to the ratio. Ratio is often bad, good. You can cancel all the uh, systematic errors. Well, the ratio is defined in such a way, E plus minus plus J psi plus additional charm divided by inclusive E plus minus to J psi plus everything. So naively, we say, well, when I have E plus minus collision, I have no hydronic particles at all. Everything I have is energy. Then the energy is sufficiently high enough I can produce J psi and all the light quarks, pion, proton, all these. So if you think about simple perturbative channel, you have up quark, down quark, strange quark, plus a bunch of gluons, which tend to be pion too later. But at least you will say, okay, the production rate for channel to the charm, probably a quarter of it. If you want to consider four flavors. But if you include a gluon, more channels, but the ratio should be smaller. But what the data show, 16 seconds. It's a puzzle, still puzzling. Then, so there's some, some reason for it. You know, <coughs> I can talk to you because it's not directly connected to this workshop, that, but also certainly directly connected to fact condition issues. So the message is the production rate for E plus minus to J size C bar pair is larger than the, all these channels combined. It's challenging. They also were measured uh, uh, PG spectrum of the J side and the Tabitron all the way to the LTC, that, including even uh, RIC. So then what you find is a historical rate that people use NRQC to do the calculation up to next living order. They have a color signal contribution, object contribution. So they are very, very systematic calculation done by uh, three groups in the world. So well, as we say, the predictive power of theory is the most important part. They just calculate one observable. So if you try to use the same formula to calculate the observable at the uh, colliders, at uh, the hydro-hydron collider, you want to check whether or not they're consistent with the EP collisions, the then even for the E plus or minus with like initial state hydro. So in that case, we find the fit, global fit from the German group. They find to fit the data pretty well for the hydron colliders, but when they compare to the, uh, the E plus or minus, it's a real problem. Then in this case, they can fit the hair okay, but the polarization for hydron is also the problem. But the, another group say, well, I fit to the parameters slightly differently. There's also an accuracy matrix on it. They emphasize to large PT region fit the data, 
And if you improve a little bit in the digital polarization, but still gap, but they pay a huge price of EP, then you plus minus. And if your other group say, I'm going to really combine this data, polarization, because they're all from colliders with the collider PG spectrum, put them together to have a fitting, but you can see the price you have to pay for EP and E plus minus, it's huge prices. Then we know the predictive power, all perturbative PCC calculation, or a connect and not PCC factorization type of calculation, is the universality mm -hmm. of the matrix sounding or universality of distribution. That's exactly the essence of your predictive power. If you cannot consistently to compare, to explain data with involving this, all the, these same hydrons, then uh, we have a trouble. So it. this failure to consistently describe the various data, is that due to um, the factorization in the production mechanism or do, do True. NRQs do the specifics of NRQs? Yeah, I will show NRQs itself have issues. Yeah. Second is the uh, power quantity in terms of all the calculation have issues. Okay, so that's a uh, problem. And also people apply to say nuclear media because nuclear media can be a filter, help you to see the, how they hydrolyze. So you produce a pair. So people look at the fixed torque experiment and this is alpha, you um, uh, scale the cross section, PA cross section, and PP cross section multiply A to the alpha power. So if it's the only multiple scale due to the length with A to the one third, if the nuclear atom block each other, then no multiple scaling with A to the one power, and also, if you think about factorization, it's a really the effect multiplied from initial state, the ground density is modified by because it's in the nuclear, uh, nucleus, then you would expect X2 scaling, but the data doesn't show at all. This has X2, then you can see from low energy to the high energy, this is the rich data, this is a certain uh, 200 GV beam data, this Fermi lab data, they're all different. But on the hand, they show some XF scaling, scaling then it won't look like the final state. Then also people try to put, compare the side prime to J side, there's a difference. And also AA, of course, energy, the PA, the LGC, look for energy loss pictures, then prediction all over. So it's a really exciting time because after all these years, we still do not really understand exactly <coughs> how the response they want to produce. So that's enough to say. So now I give you a, a few lines, just a couple slides. What are the basic consideration people have to dealing with the heavy component? What the production? You put the, you have heavy pair or, or you have to produce. That's a necessary condition to have the component. And uh, you can produce heavy pair, which the process probably the perturbity. Then the hydronization process probably the non perturbity. So you're talking about hydron hydron? Uh, uh, could, this could be the hydron, could be the photon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I need a one hydron on the show. Then, so in that case, the trouble is, this part you can think of the perturbity, this is not perturbity, if you square them, this is short distance, you can factorize these from the rest of it. But the problem is, once you have color get involved, then the soft gluon can interact between the spectator of the B and the hydronization. They can mix together to, to break the factorization. So they, then that means you have to be extremely careful what the kinematic region look for the JSI. So term region, JSI produced can be factorized, such a region G side produced cannot be factorized. So then, so in this case, if I square this amplitude, imagine the soft root car, you can be suppressed, then you will imagine you have a half perturbative calculation multiplied by this uh, high uh, function. So if you convert the phase space, more or less people all agree in this community, production part to have a pair is perturbative, but it's a transition from produce, production to the coconia have all the. Uh, Jeremy, sorry. Um, this effect that soft ones can interact with the initial state and the final okay. state. Um, that seems to be specific to uh, hydron hydron. Hydron or the uh, EP. Hydron or EP. Yeah. Not the plus okay. minus. Not the plus minus. Okay. That's why I said I need at least the one. Yeah. And um, if, if you consider hydron hydron to shape side, to what extent are these problems specific to heavy I show you next and, yeah. and, and, or, or to what extent they apply also to say jet? Of any IPT. Yeah, like that's exactly. That, that's a required of exactly what the JSI look at. Look at the JSI, the high PT or low PT, or do they have different. Yeah, my, my, my question is whether the same problem applies to light core jet production in, in proton proton. A s the same problem will apply to light core too, but a heavy core problem even worse. 
because light curve, we never measure the, uh, the pion at the zero transpose moment, almost zero transpose moment. Because the J side can decay to the electron pair, so you can measure those by one half pair, you can see the J side at almost zero transpose moment. So that, that's the problem. That's the kind of way you, you look at it. Okay? So then uh, what, so this is a typical formula, people naive in the fact of the shen people in this field assume you produce a pair with a QQ bar with some quantum state. They can be in a different spin or color state that multiply some function. It's a non-local, unlike QCD, and uh, all the other model effectively is a diff corresponding different assumption about this transition process. So I would like to summarize the whole history all the models. Color singular model effect to say only the pair with the right quantum number can become non-state. When they proposed right after the JSI was discovered, effect no three prime it up because a transition from pair to the bound state can be related to the decay of the pair to, uh, to the, all the final state. So in that case, it will make the wave function the origin, no three prime it up. It's a great predictive power and also a great chance to fail. Then also a color evaporation model say, look, uh, well, I don't have to produce a pair have the exact quantum number. I can produce a pair with a slightly different quantum number, but you have enough energy, they can radiate some particle. Then uh, they eventually uh, reduce to convert themselves into the bound state. So that's a color evaporation model. So any pair with a very mass under the open charm threshold have a chance to become the bound state. And like you see, in this case, so the fact one parameter per quantum state, so you can fix that parameter by total cross section, then predict the PG spectrum, which actually does, does not fit the collider data. The typical PG spectrum predict from this approach is much too harder than what the data show. The NRQCD factory say similar to this, but I would expand all the non transition property at the power series of V and of S. V is a rapid momentum. So in some sense, you have infinite number of parameters organized in power of V and of S. So of course, if you're lucky, you make all of the data. But the question is what the predictive power. Predictive power is this argument says V is sufficiently small, of is small. So you can truncate your perturbation theory, keep it on every turn. You can make predictions. So then that's a has success and also have a problem. Then <laughs> that another thing we proposed, uh, say, when you apply to process when the transverse momentum larger than a mass of a, the hydron, you probe J psi or epsilon, you have to expand the mass of a PT first before you do this off as velocity expansion. So you perturb the factorization approach, then you involve the fermentation functions there. So then the, also similar to these, that soft grid effect theory approach. So this is really one slide summarize all the activity and the different, you, know, you have many activity, but you can group it into different Can you explain a bit more your, your QCD factorization? I'll, show you you next. Your, your I'll explain to you. I will show you the problem, then you can see why we have to do that. Is this a random QCD method element algebra on the left? Uh, no. It's like a fermentation function you never can calculate on the left. Because non local, you can only calculate a PTF type in which you sign. Okay. The soft gluons you spoke about are the greatest transparency. Has anyone shown explicitly that they exist? Oh, they always exist. <laughs> they have yeah, to calculate <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing is that you, whether or not you can factorize in such a way, whether you determine to take care of it or they suppress. So the one that I'll show you next transpression when I show this uh, approach, we actually demonstrate if you go to high PT factorization as works, then but not to the low PT part. <coughs> so so there, there should be a concern uh, for the exclusive case as well. Correct. And that's how we'll come back to that quickly. You can imagine if you have a beam going that direction. If you produce a coconut in the same direction, slowly moving, then there's soft the gluon exchange between them, like a, even the coolant singularity type things will create a problem. Then uh, this is also related to E plus minus to J side plus charm. That's also the one source of reason why that's tremendously enhanced when you have a J side plus charm compared to J side plus like this. But also, we can discuss all this detail later. 
but there are lots of things you know going on. So I will try to summarize what, what we've learned so far. What the problems? Okay. So then, so then we I try to say NRQ CD is the very most success, successful approach so far. The effect you produce heavy for the pair with some quantum number because the mass so heavy. So you have in a perturbed region, color can be recognized as a perturbed time. If you're not perturbed, you never can distinguish the colors. So then they multiply universal and not QCD matrix time. So far, they truncate to the full matrix or turn to the square. So if you look at the contribution to your cross section, <coughs> this is the data, this is the final result. But you notice the change from leading order to next leading order, it's a huge jump. That already signaled the problem. If you have a stable perturbation theory, when you change the power of IS or change the different sub channel, you should not have all the magnitude or two or magnitude change. That, that signaled the problem. So then that's a, so the question is if you look at the detail also, the, because it's a long plot, you know, the error bar is so tiny that we really have a problem. So a typical global fit, the chi square for corneal production is over four. High school per degree freedom. So that's a pretty bad. Now, so now that I look at one, just show one diagram why there's a problem. So if you look at these things, if you look, think of the, what do they expand? Expanding the power series R class and the power series velocity. If I look at the lowest order to produce a heavy copper pair with a sufficient PT, so I have to radiate the gluon, then if you pull the two particles in the same direction, immediately realize both propagator will be offshore. Although it's a leading order in our fast, but in terms of PT, the one with PT8. Yeah, but what, what's the hierarchy now between the, the heavy four mass and PT? Are they of the same order? Or? No, at this point, so the PT is higher than mass. So PT is much higher than the heavy four mass. Yes, yeah. okay. But this, at this point in the discussion, it, I don't take that image yet. I just look at the diagram that when, when I study different media of phase space, I would take that image. So you can put mass to zero? Oh, you can put, I can put mass to zero. Yeah, I can put mass to zero, exactly. So then, so it, leading order, although it's a lowest order now fast by one with each eight, but for the next leading order, even you produce a color similar, imagine I can produce a pair with color, but with the radiant blue at a much later time, in terms of phase-based structure, I can produce something hot clear, even though they carry color, have a wrong quantum number, but that pair can eventually get the right quantum number of right color by radiant addition of one later time. If I do that, you notice the production for this part is a one of PT6. Then this because the phase space integral with all the possible positions you can radiate the one, you get logarithmic. Although you have a full power of S, but you actually have a lower power in the PT and a log. Just just to be clear in First bullet is about NRQCD factorization, which assumes that the heavy quark mass is a large scale. In the second bullet, this is not NRQCD. No, NRQCD factorization formula. So far, everybody uses the same formula applied to the PT That's okay, a problem. Then, that's, that's a problem. That's just if you're going outside of the. Uh, but it's very unnatural. To exactly. Compare. That's a reason. I would, that's our job. Yeah, immediate exactly. job conclusion. Yeah. That's a pro, That practice has been. Okay. Taken from every, by everybody, okay? Because an RQCG is an effective theory, is a soft effective theory, then you, you know, it applies to the region of the momentum much less than mass. Then, so, so that's a reason you can, if you go to the next, next region or even have worse, you can half plot the wall, pick it forth, but even though you pay a two panel, two power off mass, but you gain huge effect if the pitch is much larger than mass. But the problem is, does it continue further? That's a stop. You cannot be low that. Is there like a sign of this sickness that you? I mean, your higher order corrections are in alpha s are are less and less suppressed in PT. So to this is the high the price you stop as a. So what the message here is the leading order in our fast expansion is not equal to leading power in the PT expansion. I have to be very very careful. So. And also, you can see we did a, a one slide show exercise. I take this a full calculation, next leading order. People did the singlet channel, leading order, next leading order. Then in turn, 
Then I, what I did is just, instead of calculating one year, this calculated more than one year, that's people did it. So I calculate in the one day, or less than one day, calculate this part, multiply this part, convolute it, I get the curve, it's almost, a, you know, log plot, you could not tell the difference, linear plot, if the PT is sufficiently large, you can really reproduce everything. So that tells you the physics in this autonomic process, the way historical people organize when they apply to this kinematic region is not good. So what we propose, and one slide to summarize everything, is that this is a traditional formula and like this E factor they shape, expanding the alpha S and B. What we say is no, you have to, if you're the PT is larger than that, you have to expand at the power series along PT first, your cross section. Now each coefficient of that expansion, they try to factorize, expand in the power of S. Then, uh, so that's a factorization you, you can prove that leading power expanded produce a single particle, single particle hydrolyzed to J psi. Next leading power, you produce a pair of particle, quote, then the unquote, then uh, hydrolyzed to uh, J psi or the oops. So. Then uh, we can also show beyond these, there's no factorization. Factorization is just a pair. But that's not the bad. You even draw your cross section. Everybody say draw your factor. That's not true. Only leading power next to leading power factor, I join up by myself to all power in my factor. Can I give a part? If you are using fragmentation by two, yes, you are basically somehow creating the inputs. Yeah, this inputs. Yeah, I come to that. Excuse me. Yeah, I come back to it. Yeah. So, because I was instructed to give a okay, big picture. Okay, yeah. so, so, in this case, then the question is. Uh, if we introduce this little factorization formula, it's a hopeless because a lot of them, there's for single part fermentation, you already have a lot of fermentation functions, but now you have a heavy of pair fermentation, there are a lot of fermentation functions, then how can you eventually fix all of them? We already deal with the TMD, GPE, and a lot of functions. Well, here I took advantage of the heavy of mass. Unlike QCD, as we say, it's a theory we apply to the region when the typical moment is much less than the maximum. But now I'm going to use a perturbed PCD to handle the factorization to take care of the region for the PT is larger than S. Then I can factorize the fermentation function, then let them evolve. Evolution kernel of the perturbed calculator. Evolve to the scale of the mass at the input scale, where you need to fix your evolution. So at the input scale, kinetic energy is much smaller than the mass. So I'm going to apply an IQCD. So it's a combination of a perturbed QCD and not QCD bringing up the best of it. So I apply the not QCD to the input distributions. In this case, instead of having many fermentation functions, I reduce all these fermentation functions from single parton or double parton to the same set and not QCD matrix set, only four. Then, so then in that case, all the, these evolution things are taken care of by the perturbed calculus coefficient functions. So that's the QCD improve an IQC factorization in some sense. You do have. So, I mean, determinative evolution can really uh, deal with these like, threshold effects. So, sure. I evolve to the scale, say, twice of the mass, a little yeah. bit above twice mass. That's an input scale. They apply an IQCD. So, the moment like that is the typical, that means the typical transverse momenta of the Function or Here, typical just moment is larger than S. Yeah. So I evolved from a PG to the to mm -hmm. twice mass or whatever the scale. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, does it help? Polarization because it's not obvious. Polarization. Oh, probably, yeah. 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 We, we can talk. Uh, I didn't have that time. Well, you can look for the polarization. That that that's that's exactly, I can explain why the data showed almost unpolarized. Yeah. Instead of, say, transverse part. If you take a leading power formalism, you produce a gluon, leading power evolve all the way to last minute, spring to having a pair, when the gluon in their mass is so much smaller than its energy, then the gluon is transverse polarized. So you predict J psi is transverse polarized. Of course, data doesn't show that. But the next leading power, because you produce having a pair, in terms of power counting, leading the gamma plus, leading the dominated theory, you're only four degree free, the gamma plus, gamma plus, gamma phi, and sigma plus, you know, sigma plus, 
that define the four distinct degree freedom, then you will find that gamma plus gamma plus gamma phi, the leading power contribution, exactly launch uniforms. Then so that's it's a competition of these two, then you will see the polarization, net polarization almost neutralized for the region of phase space we have to measure. So that will summarize all the factorization. So I show you that there's some number of why this power correction is very important. We compare the apple with the apple for say I could calculate directly the NRQCD at the next leading order, or I can calculate this factorized way, I organized it, then channel by channel. So I calculate paternity that evolved to the input scale and then apply the NRQCD factor that the input scale. So then by channel by channel, the result does not even depend on what the matrix is. So when you look at it, all these four channels, this is the leading power, this is the next leading power contribution, then if you're above 15 GeV, I can reproduce everything. So that tells you the physics that PT is a lot much larger than mass, you better to organize slide differently, like a traditional math PCD. So the, the so the matching we propose a formula is we actually now reconfigure the data from a very wide range, is that when the PT is sufficiently large in the perturbative QCD, then when you go to this median region is an QCD, then so then the question, so it's a it's a it's a formula to match. Then the question is then what does the low PT region relate to your questions? So think about the low PT region. So PT is a very low. So then what happens, as I said, I need at least one hydron. This can be the photon, like GIS. Then you will find that because this guy is slowly moving, has small PT away from the spectator, if they move in the same direction, then you can have a lot of soft interaction to break. So there's a couple of ways people can handle it. For the exclusive part we're dealing with later, I will show there's some advantages because of exclusiveness, and people look for PA, they look for very poor, repeatedly, high repeatedly. I, did, I have a talk. If anyone interested, I can show you the way that the repetitive plays tremendous role to help you to separate those things. Okay, so then, and also you can go to extremely high energies when the, when the PT you observe dominated by shock. It's likely you go to NOTC. You produce a oops, only 10 GeV, but you have 1.3, no, 13 TeV energy to stop. That means you have a huge phase play to shower. I mean, the PT of the oops law is not determined by, by some non perturbative it's really determined by shower. Typical non perturbative a few hundred mV from the proton wave function is irrelevant because the PT is, you will see, the multi GVs, both from shower, but from logarithm, you can calculate this exactly. We calculate, you can see like, from oops, the normalization fix with the JS uh, Cavitron data, just plug in to do anything without anything for oops on data. So that tells you in, if you go to that region, QCD works okay, but that's not the one we interested for this particular purposes. Then the similar thing with uh, Raju and uh, others trying to fit the distance with the small x, we go to very low PT, in fact, the x part on small, they use this map x formula to fit it. So you can also fit that. But so for us, for EIC kinematics, knowing all this trouble, then look at what we can measure at the EIC. Yeah, I see typically there's several types. You can have the so-called semi-include DIS, start with Ruan, Kuruji's, uh, JSI, that inclusive process. All the exclusive process, you can buy, that means uh, exchange a vacuum quantum number, almost vacuum quantum number, then at least no color. So you can have a, at least a two gluons or multiple gluons. That's very important. To, you like to have a very localized production, adding more gluon will be power suppressed, so the process will be dominated by two gluons. That's the region we're interested in for uh, GPDs. Then, so those are the things that EIC, is, we're, we're looking to it. So then I show two slides, we already see it, just for to, to, to move connection there before I talk about the problem. You saw this on Monday. This is from EIC white paper without much explanation. You calculate these, have a cross-section, Fourier transform, get the distributions. But for physics point of view, I want to emphasize, I really show this, is not to show the same plot. I like to understand really what physics behind the images. When you have a bound state, then when you boost it to very high energy because of high energy claim, you can stay in the rest of it, doesn't matter. Because the momentum exchange in one direction is so large, bonding effect is so small compared to large momentum transfer. But the transfer side preserves the most of the confining information. 
So then what I want to know, if I can measure GPD, I really want to know when x go to small, whether or not this tail, the that probability to find the soft drawing, keep extending or limited by our order function. And also I want to know how fast they fall. You know, understandable, the density to find a ground far away from the uh, proton will be almost zero. But how fast they fall, what the behavior they fall. Those may really give us information from finding mechanisms. And also understand the you know, nuclear structure. So when you put all this nuclear together, if the, all the muons are confined inside the radius of the proton, when you put together, that means uh, nuclear force is really binding by uh, color neutral, pi, effectively pi r, sigma, all these particles. There's no long range of color correlations between these. But on the other hand, if the tail is sufficiently long, the gluon can overlap when we put the nuclear together. So the gluon color may correlate over the side of the nuclear. Larry just left, and we have to see the gene because he emphasized it is possible if the long range correlate exists. If you go to sufficient small x, the nuclear can be good as a big proton. Um, but that requires a long range color color. Just, just uh, one comment. We know quite a bit about the transverse distribution of gluon. Uh, from the Hela, uh, JPSI, photon electric product. I will summarize that in my talk. Sure. And one, one interesting thing is uh, that uh, one, one sees that uh, Grebov diffusion is actually suppressed in, uh, in uh, gluons with a significant uh, transverse moment uh, or, or, trans, uh, um, or a, 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 a significant ring organization point. And uh, so the, the, uh, the transverse size of the gluon density grows um, towards small x much at a much smaller rate than the uh, um, than the soft size of the nuclear. Okay, we'll, the we'll get this part. Part. So I think that, that, that has many yeah. many implications. Sure, for, uh, absolutely. That's a degree you can see if we can measure it. So use a JSI as a phone yeah. is very very important. We can we know quite a bit from the era yeah. data. Right. Yeah. But we can, with a hundred to a hundred thousand times, we must do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is one going back. Sure, sure. What would be this kind of this question? Sure, sure. In the book, what did you use this? Can A be bigger? Oh, I said A, I'm sure. A is a nucleus. Simple. Ah, okay. Can A, a nucleus, a larger nucleus, is okay. used as a bigger proton. That means okay. the colors okay. can only okay. okay. If you talk to someone from the F group, they say no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so, so let me skip. So now I want to just use the rest of my time to emphasize a few issues when we're dealing with this uh, 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 DISP. First of all, when you do the exclusive process, you can, what you really have produced high quality, but this could be a photon, a virtual photon, then you can change uh, back, you know, you start with the hydrogen, with the hydrogen, you want to keep the photon intact. So that means you exchange the uh, combination with no color. You have at least like two grams or three grams, any number of grams. And uh, uh, in every factorization, this is something I have not, been, I have not heard enough emphasis on. It. We say that it's factorization. But what's the factorization? Factorization say I have a whole square of amplitude, square gave me the cross section, that's probability. I need to rewrite these as a product of a two or three probability. That means you, all the quantum correlation between different pieces is strongly suppressed. So that means... But if you calculate any local regions, if you have a finite rate of... So sure, that's if I, now, if I want to prove to all order, I can understand the structure. But here I want to emphasize the necessary condition. If you don't get even the necessary condition, then forget it. I mean, you seem to imply that uh, factorization is at the cross-section level and it requires that different parts of the amplitude don't interfere with each other. But I mean, we can define factor, we can contemplate factorization at the amplitude level. You could imagine a process like, say, DBCS, where you measure lots of interference. I can do the yeah. I didn't say have to. Other processes sure. They really extract the amplitude as if it were a sure. physical. This is a, and, uh, you can do the uh, exclusive case, you can do it at the amplitude level. If you can factorize it, or you put the cross section together, they also factorize it. That's fine. Nothing to uh, guess yeah. that. Yeah, but the key is, if you factor whether or not you're at the amplitude level or cross-section level, if you say they can be factorized at different scale, physics taking place at different scale, that means that 
connection between these two, the particle connector, should be almost like a classical particle at the time scale you observe. If the particle is too much virtual, then you're in trouble, they connect together. So that means when you have a scale amplitude, no particle is real. You, you have to interval all the phase space. The reason we can have factorization, at least the perturbative, as a necessary condition, you can identify so called huge singularity of each surface. So then naturally, you integral with a full range of momentum, but it dominated by the region where the particle put on mass. So that means those two parts can be factorized. So that's a necessary condition. So what I should be the hydrogen hydro single particle scattering case is very natural. We have an amplitude momentum k, particle complement quantity to minus k, but they all have different I epsilon, so when you go over, they're pinched. But when you're dealing with at the amplitudes, like exclusive process, the I epsilon is exactly the same, both plus I epsilon, plus I epsilon. But lucky thing is, whenever you have two particles, you can always define the total momentum and the relative momentum. When you integral the relative momentum of the pair, you will find that as long as the pair has sufficient large momentum, you can see that because the flow of the relative momentum is in the opposite direction, they have a pair of pinch singularity if the P plus longitude momentum is sufficiently large in the transverse of the triangle. So that actually is important. You cannot, that's why you need a hard scale here. So make sure this pair as total provide enough plus momentum to combine with this particle, whether it's a real or virtual, to create enough S hat, to create a hat in heavy core. It's good if you put the pi on there in trouble, you have to have a lot of PT, otherwise you're in trouble. That condition will not work. So, so these are the sort of necessary conditions. So, but once you satisfy that condition, then you can have, when you expand this, you can have a twist two, GPD, twist three GPD. In principle, you can have any number of twist GPD from amplitude. You can factor. But so you have to show that that one. Second, I just gave an example with the so this is the one that we know. And the, another thing is that I mentioned earlier the low PT, but the exclusive process that we're interested in, in some sense all the low PT, because we would like to have a scale that produce much larger than T. T is corresponding to the relative momentum is the transfer momentum between the hydrogen proton and the hydrogen it produced. So in that case, it, it seems we are in trouble. But luckily, because the exclusive process, if we, in the center mesh, when the photon coming collided with the proton, proton is defective with a small transverse momentum k. So that where the JSI can produce? Going in the opposite direction. So you can show that because that kinematics actually help you to prove that condition. Even though the T, <coughs> the T is sufficiently small compared to hard scale. So that's actually is a very, very important part of it. You can actually do the collinear factorization. So the whole TF GPD factor is collinear factorization. So then the example is uh, that the later they go to that region, if the T is so small, then you can have exchange in multiple gluons. You can have not necessarily just a two gluon dominant. There's this actually I'm working on to teach who two gluon dominant. For this talk, I just adapted what the work in our organizer did without our S, so whether it's a two gluon, three gluon, any number of gluon dominant, say so just use an ADSCFT correspondence, take advantage of it, you just calculate scaling amplitude. They treat the whole thing as a, you know, it's a, it's a current, and then it's scattered between the proton. So once you do that, they actually, the results relate to any momentum tensor. So this is connected discussion we had in the T term. And also they expect when you exchange, in this case, you can have, although the color is neutral, but you can have a slight different spin, spin state. You can have a spin zero state, you can, different spin state. So they have, well, have graviton courses spin two state. So then you can do that, you can calculate, you can see the result, but I want to, without going into the detail, you can ask the uh, UCD is here, but I want to show the numerical result, although it's an estimate, but it's an interesting estimate. So the numerical result is you compare the same data, remember the cross-section, there is a, if you do the decomposition, there is a primary relation, uh, Shanto's approach, others approach, there is a one minus B, the B is a parameter, 
actually corresponding to, if B is zero, that means no trace number, any momentum connect the trace number. B zero choose to be the no trace number, equal to Y is, oh, I'm sorry. The maximum contribution from trace number B zero, B equal to one means have minimum. So that for most region, for large W region, in their mass, the difference is small. And also most, the further you go, I did show the further, if you further you go to the large W, the prediction and the data will be far away because it would not move between two states, that which is not the right things, uh, quantum number. But the, what's interesting is near threshold. When you push yourself to go to very, very close to the threshold, this is the W go to more end part of it. Uh, the, uh, the UC actually introduced an extreme ratio is take the B equal to zero over one. So then when you go push to near the thresholds, then you will find there's tremendous contribution come from the region from the spin zero state. Then, so that actually connected to the trace anomaly. Then, uh, so direct calculation, but I want to, I forgot to emphasize, if you look at the Feynman diagram calculation, just counting the diagram, all the number of ruins, then you will find that uh, typically leading contribution for the GPD approach, this is twist two. But if you think about it, what does the effective twist of a trace anomaly in terms of matrix and definition twist? Of so then, you know, when you go to high W, that contribution is very small. So when you go to threshold, in principle, every twist is start to contribute. So in a perturbative sense. So in the sense that you have a chance to see these kind of physics, but how you organize it to see extract the information is difficult. So, so what, what exactly is the parametric expansion here? What, what's the large parameter? In the special, it's uh, you're expanding. Mass is still not expanding. You're expanding in uh, something over heavy quark mass, or if I do the perturbity, if yeah. I do perturbity, I will expand to something over high mass. That means because uh, in that, that from that parametric scheme, the twist expansion should be very few. I'm, that's I'm, I'm doing and trying to do it. There's a few issues I can have yeah. in detail. But, but, but near this threshold, the yeah. momentum transfer is as big as the uh, yeah. I think delta is like 1.5 GeV. That's, yeah. Yeah. It's a co it's, so that's exactly the issue. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's exactly. So you do TV in the stars. That's correct. Yeah. That's a difficult part. So mm -hmm. I try to organize things in a perturbative perturb way. And, uh, and uh, exactly used to organize the scale. Then you know, because the leading term in to RT W is a leading twist, but trace normally you take the twist four term, and how can you extract it? So usually, if I could say, I calculate what, what the space is space your space. Even, uh, even near threshold, why uh, is it limited to the spin two operator that the particular two run to the trace normally? Does this emerge from some more PD? Well, no, as like I say, trace number itself, if you look at F mu trace, you know, if you have two F mu, if you think it's a dimension four operators, the twist is defined with dimension minus spin. So if I fix the spin, say two indices, three D plus, <laughs> like in the wrong screen, that's twist two. But if I don't fix the plus, trace them, then mix together. So I will mix all the twists yeah. twist together. Yeah. So it's a two all the way to four. So that's a, uh, a complication, but it's very interesting physics. But I think of time out, we can discuss in more detail. But I want to emphasize that Coconia is a very interesting because it plays a dual role. For us, we really want to use Coconia as a probe. Not, you know, we like to understand Coconia itself, but try to probe the structure, high ground structure, because it's a localized probe. But at the same time, the guy has a long term feature of it, so it makes things complicated. So, so unlike UCD, it has been working very well for the region not applied to too high PT, but if you stay away PT equal to zero or PT equal to much larger mass, unlike UCD, either formulas have been very successful. But if you do the exclusive process, in that case, it's a golden process of GPT, I emphasize even the PT of T is small, but the kinematics, photon hydron collision, or virtual photon hydron collision, you look for T small, the photon diffracted, so the J side you produce, we're going completely opposite direction. 
So any soft growing traction between them actually is suppressed. So that actually helps the saturation. So even though the naively coming the PT is small. So that actually is good, but we didn't talk, I don't have time to talk about nuclear, because the nuclear they are the filter with maybe additional information to control the production. Thank you. Just a, a general question. So, so you said if you look at the fluent uh, distribution in e-space and, and how fast it falls off, you can learn something about confinement. Could we make the same statement about the block distribution? Yes. But you absolutely yeah. the image in cell, <coughs> even though we never you know, first of all, we never can measure elastic uh, color form factor, you no, know, exchange one rule. That's how we measure charge radius, the proton or these things. But we cannot do that for the color because we want better color. So, but on the other hand, if we can measure a matrix element dominated by exchange of a PP bar or two blue, that means it's a density. So it, although it's not directly color, but it's a density. But how they fall when they go to transfer side, that exactly tells you, you can imagine it's like a, uh, in the, even in the traditional way, so imagine a field properly reported that if the confining mechanism they start to dampen, they will go fall down. Then the question is uh, how fast they fall, they depend on the exact mechanism, how you confine them. Then if you go to excite state, you might see the oscillation. But that measurement itself will give us information, but not in the longitudinal direction, direction because of a lot of momentum transfer. A transverse direction will preserve that. I remember I had a many long discussion with Mahon Bottle then about the, what if you have exponential or more, look like a normal way you have exponential, then what if you have a Gaussian or all the power, all these kind of possibilities. But we don't know. From QCD itself, you can define the theory in the radio coordinate, you could do a lot of things, give you some hint, but you don't have, you, could, you cannot calculate photography, that's a problem. Let me follow up on that uh, the question regarding confinement. So, um, is, uh, say, let's think of the nucleon in some um, wave function way of having configurations with a certain energy that exists for a certain time by the, by the uncertainty principle. So, these um, configurations that have um, lots of gluons at small x, they're actually very high energy mm -hmm. configurations. In, in, look at them in, in, in ordinary time and they exist only for very short times and they normally and that's is seen only in high energy processes because they have a large cross section and uh, the high energy process can sort of intercept them in, in uh, normally low energy scattering they're just um, they're just integrated out so my question is um, uh, with say with gluon imaging and small x in some sense we're we're studying the spatial distribution of gluons in the nucleon in some high energy configurations that exist only for a very short, short time. What does this tell us about, say, confinement in the sense of structure and spectroscopy, where we look at bound states and we look at their spatial size or, or their radial excitations, at, which is essentially low energy physics? Yeah. They are diff uh, sure. I, I, they're they're different sectors. You can throw these words around. Sure, I understand. I you know. I understand. There's different part of it. Yeah, different, different so, part of it. I understand. Here it is just say how the distribution go at the transverse side. Yeah, how that's to that's understand a quantitative it. question, yeah. and I can answer yeah. that without ever yeah. uttering yeah. the word. Um, for the quite, no, no, I say yeah. the connection. If I have that answer to connect them directly, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a wonderful paper. Uh, there is a certain reason we can discuss that on it. So these are uh, the small x things, the, the tail, the transfer side. It's it, it, it's a term is size. It's a long wave part. It determines yeah, the size of the proton. It's, it's this, um, the size of the proton yeah. in some rare configurations that have extremely high energy and exist only for a very short time, and they and they, they also they have. For example, longitudinal. No, no, no. If you look at them in the rest frame, no, I don't want the longitudinal. I want the transfer side. Um, yeah. 
if, because if, if you look at them in the restroom, they have a longitudinal extent that is way larger than the normal uh, size of the of the proton. So if, how do you associate that with the no, no, uh, no, that's not true. So, uh, so inside the proton, you stay in the rest frame. That's not the kind of frame physics. Okay, only the picture is the kind of frame. Yeah. Physics, independent frame. Yeah. You have soft mode in the old direction. Inside the proton, you stay with the proton. You have soft mode in the old directions. Okay, so then because the collision, now the x think about 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4. Inside the proton, those modes is completely virtual quantum state. Mm -hmm. they, they're the long wavelengths, which is very long wavelengths. Inside the proton, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, the proton, inside the rest frame, not part of a collision. Mm -hmm. Inside the rest frame. Those are stay normally don't see, as you say, soft physics. I don't see them. But however, when I climb them, you see the measure of the X. What happens is because I dump a lot of energy into it because of the collision. So I push the energy, you know, 10 to minus 3, multiply log B momentum, yeah. end up with something larger than pi on X, become a physical state. So I saw them. But in the transverse thing, just a long way to X, soft things, never seen them. I mean, it's the it's inside the proton, you have quantum fracturation all the time, have tremendous amount of soft gluon. Yes, yes. Those soft gluon, you don't see it, it change all the time. Then we see the real experiment that we probe X times minus energy. four yeah. because the collision, yeah. so put the energy into it in the beam, because so beam. they become the liberate them, become the, you, you above the pion, above the yeah. roll, above these, become physical state. But as far as the proton itself is concerned, you have those soft particles at yes. 10 to the minus 3 and all the time. You liberate the piece in the long direct completion, but the transport part all over there is a long way back to soft physics. I agree, but, but it, still, if, if you say follow the approach that we uh, uh, used yesterday with strong like from wave functions, mm -hmm. suppose I expanded my, my uh, proton in, 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 Fox, in Fox states. And um, then I have these uh, four states with a large number of small x gluons, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I can go to the rest frame, and I can uh, I can look at the wave function coordinate mm -hmm. space, and I can ask what's the typical longitudinal extent of this. Right, that's exactly the problem. I think we need to discuss right. this part after that, these, otherwise it never end it. That, that, um, like the wave function approximation is, is, is large. It's good approximation if yeah, you're dealing yeah. with process in long directions. Yeah. If you're dealing with a process detail in the transverse direction, you need to have a long discussion between yeah. like wave okay. functions. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I mean, I, 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 um, I personally, I, I, I don't see it's a connection a of, of this, say, um, dynamics of small x gluons, which is associated with concepts like diffusion and things like that. Really, I, I don't see a connection well, that, like that with confinement no, I, and the sense of, uh, um, say, uh, structure and spectroscopy of atoms at, uh, at low energy. And they say, if I have a clean uh, relation between them, I will write a very good paper immediately. Okay? Yeah. But I explained to you, the physics of the transfer direction is a soft physics. It's not the way you think about the non junior collider physics. The collider one is just say it's x ten minus four because you have beam and you dump the energy into it, excite that state into a physical state above the pi on wall and you see that. But it is a transfer side. If you stay in the proton rest frame, it's always there, soft physics. It, it is a soft physics. But I don't know whether or not connected to exactly and finding mechanism you think about. Yeah. Let me ask a much simpler question. Sure. Do you remember what is the kinematic range in X uh, for this uh, for exclusive uh, for production at uh, DHC energies? But, uh, what kinematic range would be for your X mm -hmm. for exclusive yes. at uh, DHC? Yeah, what is it? Yes, yeah, I think a 10 minus 2. Yeah, 10 minus two. At the minus two, at the two minus two, they will probably no problem. But at the minus three, I don't afraid to like a best correction to the Need to study, yeah. Yes, yes. But if you want to extract the gluon, best one, 
is to the point of production. It's a it's, so then uh, it's true. Then how well we can control our population is challenging. But we have to buy a big bigger business. Yeah, but that basically yeah. Yeah. It, it, it makes eggs bigger. It's, it's not free lunch. No matter what you do. So it's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, by this expansion on the transfer side, you can get the idea of expansion also from the total cross section in DP, for instance. Then the yes, cross section rises, and it's like an expansion of the transfer side. Yeah. Is there any correlation with this? Or is it totally different? Yeah. It could. I don't know. I don't have an answer. It I, could I, relate to that, I but would, I don't know. I would comment exactly about that. Okay. My, my point. No. Sorry. Okay. Two, two different things. One is the transfer size of pythons that carry um, so a significant fraction of the neutrons, like chromomorphism, and say, then to the minus three, then to the minus four. Mm -hmm. The other is the, the soft soft size of the neutron in, in uh, say, in proton proton elastic scattering or other um, soft processes at high energies. That soft size is much larger, and if you um, if you adopt a, a, a Partonic picture in which even soft interactions are mediated by partons, like the Dubov picture, then you would say that this is the size of uh, really uh, deep partons that carry a momentum fraction uh, that's vanishingly small and that they're almost indistinguishable from the vacuum. So it's, it's uh, bottom line is it's uh, really two different things the, the uh, transfer size of uh, finite X partons and their. Um, and, and, and its evolution and the, the transfer size of the neutron in uh, soft interactions. Yeah, it's uh, related to what you say. You know, when you say final x, the question is how final x is possible. X. What the value do you think of the final right. x? In this is exactly the reason we try to. In the context of Greenwald's particle picture, where you have uh, your, 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 your we, nuclear moves with a momentum that is large compared to the scale of vacuum fluctuations, but not. Mm -hmm. Not infinite. And then sure. you have a, exactly. the so window of if we can push uh, X, the X to smaller, the smaller, the smaller X, or push vacuum scale exactly. over the transition. Yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. No questions? <laughs> um, maybe about, uh, about the, the, what the EIC would do. I mean, you, you, uh, uh, you laid out all the, 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 the probably the existing pictures of. Um, um, the production mechanism in hadron hadron or, or, or electron hadron. If it is an inclusive, we all have trouble. Yeah. So, um, uh, NRQCD should in principle be able to um, describe both semi inclusive production EP mm -hmm. and also exclusive production That's in EP with last the, thing, the, the match the, to the material. Yeah. yeah. So, um, have such calculations been done and up, um, would they? Um, could we use the EIC measurements to test, say, the universality of NRQCD matrix elements, etc. As um, so they 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 yeah, we actually try to do. Uh, I still have one student from the Stony Brook. He's going to graduate uh, another in another year. He's exactly mm -hmm. doing the global. We calculate the EP, E plus minus. We yeah. did a calculation of PP before in the published paper. Mm -hmm. So do the global fit. Different fit. I mean, if, if, if you could get that. Community interested in, in the EIC that Yeah, exactly. Yes. These are actually a number of people who know Kyle Lee, who worked with my former student, Tim Park Park, and then what you see as a little paper just structure. He's coming to Excel, so. Yeah. I would actually hope that uh, you know, for the timing that the EIC may be operated, there will be sufficient amount of books on the paper. That's right. From CERN, and this uh, will fix, of course, this. Hopefully, there will be. I think this might excel a little bit better now. I think yeah. for the exclusive process, when I first heard it, I thought it was trouble. But I, I realized when I looked at the specific production mechanism, actually, calculation works better. <laughs> <laughs> because it really kinematically forced you to go to the opposite direction from the expected. So actually, it's better. Yeah. But if you try to produce upsilon, then we know the longitude momentum that right. the can have to provide to generate that is sufficiently high the typical transverse scale. 